Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you a case of posterior capsule rupture and how I managed it. So this is the last fragment I'm removing. And as I am removing it, so right here, you can see there's a ovalish hole um, right over where the chopper is. And so I broke the bag here and I'm going to show this under slow motion. My CDE is at 0.59. I'm not using any ultrasound, but you can see the vacuum is very high and I have the phaco tip fairly low. Um, and as I sandwich that piece, you can see right there at that moment, um, the posterior capsule breaks. And so my mistake is that I was too close to the posterior capsule uh, with very high vacuum. So obviously this was poor technique, um, but things happen fairly quickly, especially with my aggressive fluidic settings. And so at this point you have to uh, gather yourself. I removed that last um, fragment. And now at this point, you know, what are we going to do? Obviously you want to pause and think about what you're going to do. Uh, you don't want to come out with a phaco. You don't want to, the chamber to collapse and invite vitreous into the anterior chamber. At this point, I don't believe I broke the hyaloid face. I don't think there's any vitreous in the anterior chamber yet. I'm going to put in a dispersive viscoelastic uh, into the anterior chamber gently. And as I do that, I remove the phaco tip. And now um, I'm gently putting the dispersive viscoelastic um, into the whole uh, area and you want to be careful not to expand the hole while you're doing so. I still have a lot of uh, cortex left and so I'm going to go back into uh, mechanical I and A but I've asked my technician to uh, cut the IOP down to 30 and so she's in the process of doing that and IOP uh, with a centurion is uh, reflective of bottle height. Of course, there's no bottle with it. And so I'm going to go with a lower flow and you want to come right up to the edge of the cortex and gently apply the vacuum. And as you go right up to the edge of the cortex, you're, it's able to remove the cortex very efficiently without removing any aqueous or surrounding viscoelastic. And right here, as I'm getting to this edge, I'm noticing as I got the vacuum up, nothing's happening. So then I realize this is vitreous now. So I've, I have vitreous in my port. And so the highlight face is no longer intact. And uh, I'm just holding irrigation at this point. I'm going to put some more just, uh, I'm going to use my dispersive viscoelastic cannula to try to uh, tease that vitreous off of the port. Uh, you could reflux at this point, but you might reflux a bunch of lens material into the eye, but I go ahead and do it now. As you can see, that lens material came out, but thankfully it was at the edge of the incision. So now I'm going to push some dispersive gently uh, to push that uh, vitreous back and uh, expand uh, the eye a little bit with the viscoelastic. And now um, I see this is a fairly round tear, and I, I want to make, but I want to make sure it doesn't have any jagged edges. So I'm going to attempt a posterior capsularexis. Um, as you can see, the posterior capsule is very thin and it's folded up here um, and it's still intact inferiorly, but I don't want that to tear and split any further. So I'm finding the edge of the posterior capsule tear here. And it's uh, very thin, much thinner than uh, the anterior capsule. Because as you can see, I'm, I'm able to pull it and I'm actually propagating it. And now it's on the right side at about the two o'clock position. And um, again, trying to find that edge so I can complete the posterior capsular axis. And so there you go. So I finished the posterior capsular axis. As you can see, it's pretty large. So I don't really feel like I'm going to use that to uh, optic capture a lens in the bag because it's pretty big. Um, but at least it's round and it won't um, radialize any further. I'm using a dry aspiration technique to remove that last remnant of cortex, which is a really neat uh, technique, just using a BSS cannula and just uh, pulling back on the plunger to asp do a dry aspiration of the cortical material. Now I'm using uh, dispersive viscoelastic to just uh, push those little small fragments towards the main incision so I can burp it out of the eye. So I feel like I have a fairly clean eye now. At this point, I want to do my vitrectomy. I'm going to do a parse plane of vitrectomy. 
Um, you could certainly use trocars. Um, I haven't uh, been really uh, using that at this point, but it's something I may consider in the future. Um, I went with a caliper 2.5 millimeters poster to the Limbus, and this is a 23 gauge MVR blade. Um, especially in unplanned situations, I don't know, the trocars are really meant for self-sealing incisions, and uh, you have to apply a lot of pressure on the eye to create that incision, and I, I didn't feel comfortable doing that because uh, pushing on the eye can just invite more vitreous. This would just felt like it would be more gentle. <clears throat> and so I'm going to proceed with the vitrectomy in eye, eye cut A mode. And uh, you have to be patient here. You can see the cut rate is very high at 4,000. The vacuum is high at 400. But the aspiration rate is very low, and it pulses during this uh, step. And so you have to be very patient. It's cutting, and then cutting very high rate, but sucking at a very slow rate. And so you just want to make sure um, you're patient here. I'm using the... The tractor in the pars plana, but I'm using my uh, irrigation in the anterior chamber to repair CT site. And I use it here to sweep uh, the wounds, uh, which will help ensure there's no vitreous to the incision. And so you just want to take your time doing this. And going back to how I ruptured the posterior capsule, obviously I had very high vacuum and I had that teeny light, tiny fragment, and it was uh, below the, or, or at the level of the iris plane, and I shouldn't have, shouldn't have had that uh, the finger tip so close to the post posterior capsule, um, or at least uh, be using much more gentle vacuum instead of such high vacuum. Here I want to make sure that that um, paracentesis site that had the anterior uh, uh, fluid in, uh, infusion uh, doesn't have any vitreous as well, so I'm coming from a different approach and sweeping that um, uh, left um, paracentesis and, and uh, using the vitrectomy to uh, remove any vitreous that might be uh, going to my um, paracentesis incision. There's a little fragment there. Um, thankfully, the vitrector catches it and eats it. And um, I'm pretty confident there's no vitreous in the anterior chamber at this point. And so I'm going to put some uh, cohesive viscoelastic into the ciliary sulcus. I've chosen to put a three-piece lens into the ciliary sulcus. Um, I pre-placed a uh, tenonalin suture in my incision. And uh, I did that because I don't want to be suturing and causing uh, the chamber to collapse. Um, uh, during my vitrectomy, so I made sure I placed that tenonolin suture uh, early before the vitrectomy. And then now I'm going to uh, just gently, with this Maltzman, gently place the trailing haptic into the uh, ciliary sulcus again. Um, and at this point, again, I'm going on a low, uh, low flow setting. The IOP is... Uh, Again at 30, and I'm going to remove the cohesive viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. You can see uh, everything looks quite good. I don't see any vitreous uh, in the anterior chamber at this point. Um, the lens is well centered. So I'm going to put uh, a BSS cannula through my paracentesis to help stabilize the, um, the chamber as I come out with my um, uh, INA tip. I'm going to hydrate my incisions now. And um, I'm going to go ahead and tie these, the tenonolin suture. At this point, I could have put in some myocol or myostat to constrict the pupil. I could have put in uh, triamcinolone uh, to stain if there's any vitreous. But <clears throat> I felt very confident that there was no vitreous uh, in the antechamber at this point. So 
but certainly uh, it doesn't hurt to do that. Whenever I have a vitreous loss case, I like to put in a tenon on suture, just as the belt and suspenders uh, method of keeping things under control. Patients can rub their eyes, and I have seen situations where patients rub their eyes, and then the next day there might be a vitreous to the main incision. And so this gives me some added security. And I'm closing the sclerostomy site. And I checked before with a Wexel sponge and there was no vitreous at the uh, sclerotomy site either. And so uh, the take home points are don't let the chamber collapse uh, when you have a posterior capsule rupture. Early identification is critical because if you keep chugging along thinking things are fine, then that's when you're going to have a whole lot of vitreous in the anterior chamber. As you can see, I didn't have very much at all. Um, and the hyaloid face was intact in the very beginning when I recognized it. Uh, keep the chamber uh, stable, put some dispersive viscoelastic in the eye, and then uh, very carefully under low flow settings, you can remove cortical material. You can do a dry aspiration technique using a BSS cannula. Um, and when you do vortrectomy, a parse plane approach is better because the vitreous will be going backwards towards the vitrectomy port uh, in the parse plane space rather than coming anteriorly, which is where you don't want it to be. This gives you a lot more confidence that the vitreous will be evacuated uh, completely and confidently um, out of the anterior chamber by going parse plana. And in this case, uh, you know, a, a three-piece lens in the ciliary sulcus um, is, uh, is never a wrong choice. My capsularexis was a little bit on the big side, so I was not able to do an optic capture with this. Um, I shot for um, one diopter less than Plano, and uh, thankfully this patient uh, was 2025 uncorrected post-op day one, so I chose... Uh, one diopter less for a sulcus placement for this patient. So then after uh, closing all the incisions, uh, close conjunctiva, the sclerotomy and the temporal main incision, bury all the knots. And uh, with any vitrectomy case, I always like to end with a subconjunctival ANSEF. I'm hoping you learned something new and thank you for your attention.